I follow the path according to memory and arrive at a place different from what I remember. This is... You can tell where the Kuma River downstream is dock is by looking. I suppose that's true, but... It's August right now, right in the middle of summer break. This is one of the few tourist spots in Noa Toyo, and yet there's almost no one here. Is this their day off or something? It'd be closed if it were. They're open. Uh, I guess so. I doubt it's because of her training with the sword, but Nagi's words are sharp just the same. It's so good that it's hard to continue the conversation. Nagi Jan! Uh, hmm? Surprisingly gloomy. Oh, gosh darn. <laughs> Surprisingly gloomy voice, Hachiroko shrugs. Look around for the source of voice, but there's she's nowhere to be found. That's a rude thing to do around a customer. It's ruder to be reading a book during business hours. Nagi flies. She goes behind the reception counter and pulls something out from behind the pillar. Pokemon Chan, uh, here, if you keep doing that, you're going to turn away customers. Oh, shush, Nagi-chan. Uh, let me at least bookmark my page. Hmm. She seems like a calm girl. She's sitting on a chair, but I can tell that she's tall. She's bigger than Nagi, and yet she's being dragged around by her. The chair she's sitting on is being pulled. She tries to resist. So Tetsuzama? Oh, that's right. This is no time to be zoning out. Uh, Nagi, did your master teach you to force others against their will? Why'd that be taught? Power is wielded only to protect the weak. Her words and actions don't exactly align here. Nagi seems to have realized that, and all of a sudden she stops pulling this Fukumai-chan. Ah. Fukumai loses her balance, but Nagi catches her. That was close, Nagi-chan. Thanks for making sure I didn't bust my head. What are friends for, Fukumai-chan? <laughs> we always help each other out. She's boasting about saving Fukumai, when in fact she was the one who nearly sent her to the floor in the first place. Nagi smiles innocently as if she's completely forgotten about th instigating the whole thing. Maybe, maybe Fukumai feels relieved by it, though she still has the book open in her hands while she smiles. It seems we got in the way of your reading due to showing up unannounced. Oh, it's no big deal. She hangs on to the still open book and holds it up between us. It's as if it's her protective shield or something. Regional Urban Development. Stimulation by Tourism. You're quite enthusiastic about your studies. <sighs> she closes her book. Our gazes meet for a brief moment before she turns away again. Pokemon Chan is a bit shy. You'll get to know her, though, she, once she warms up to you. Uh, I see. Well, uh, take your time. No rush opening up. Uh, about this girl, Fukumai. It may sound harsh, but I honestly don't care who she is. As old man Minakasa told me, my top priority is to learn about the current state of a Aitoyo's tourism. Your name's Fukumai-chan, right? Uh, uh. She hides behind her now-closed book and nods numerous times. You were sitting at the reception desk, but you are... Are you from around here? Uh, yes, she's the only daughter of the owner here, Auntie Midori. I see. Regardless, I'm sorry to, have to ask this, but... Do you mind calling for Midori-san? Oh, I may have rushed things a little too much. It's not proper to ask for an introduction without even introducing myself first. Uh, my name is Migitsu Sotetsu. Uh, I've come back to Ohitoyo Oto to be part of the anti aircraft factory movement. Uh, I'm also Hachiroku's new owner. As of Tetsu-sama has said, 
I am the Imperial Railways 8620 series steam engine, 8620 exclusive railroad, Hachoku, Anti Factory. She must have calmed down. I can finally make out what she's saying. <gasps> yeah, these guys are on the our side. That's why I brought them to you, Fukumai chan. Oh. She nods. The book she's been using as a shield gradually lowers. Um. I'm Ayase Fukumai. I'm the acting owner of this ship dock for now. Acting owner? Adi Midori is in bad health, so she keeps going in and out of the hospital. Um, she's at the hospital today, so I'll listen to what you have to say. All right. It doesn't matter who it is, really. What I need to do doesn't change, so I'll just try explaining things the best I can. I talk about how I met Nagi and why we were standing in front of her. Providing tourism was the steam engine. Fukumai finally lifts her head up. Her eyes look over, overly cautious, or should I say fearful. She looks at Hachiroku and me for a few seconds, and then goes back to looking down. I'm trying my best at being the acting owner, but there are never any customers. I see. I couldn't bring myself to say I thought so, even though I was getting the sense that there not being any customers today was not an isolated event, but if it's truly like this every day, the business itself is in danger. That's why, if you can promote tourism, it'll be great for us. If there's anything I can do to help, I want to. Thanks. But even if the number of tourists increases, if she's the salesperson here, the future is, well, treacherous. Actually, no, it's too early to make that judgment. Anyway, let's see. The current situation on tourism. I'd like to have myself and Tetraco experience this Kumurva downstream boating. Of course, we'll pay the fares uh, for two adults. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Two adults with tax will be 7,650 yen. Sure. I take out a 10,000 yen bill and receive back 2,000 yen and some change. My honest thoughts about this is that it's much more expensive than I expected. Now, let me start by teaching you how to wear your life jacket. Oh. It's a very retro sounding phone. Pokemon panics briefly but quickly hands over the life jacket to Nagi. Ah, oh, Nagi, can you. Leave it to me! Uh, please excuse me for a second. Fukumai goes for the phone. Thank you for waiting. Uh, this is the Kuma River downstream ship dock reception desk. I said, hey, yes, speaking. Oh my! Hatroku gives out an impressed sigh as she nods. Fukumai seems completely different on the phone than when speaking to us. Gosh darn! <laughs> Eyes over here! Oh, sorry. If you don't learn how to wear a life jacket, you're gonna die! I suppose so. Sorry, uh, let's get started over with the tutorial. Fine. After saying that, Nagi clearly, or deftly, puts on the life jacket in a way that's easy for us to see. Just watch out for the front and back. You'll be alright if you fall into the water. It'll inflate on its own. Hmm. I have to wear the children's size. I see. It's just a matter of height. I suppose so, but... As long as it fits, it doesn't matter what you wear. If you wear one that doesn't fit you and you fall in the water, you die! <sighs> Obviously still reluctant about it, Hachiroko puts on the children's size life jacket. Hmm. As Hachiroko requested, I'm holding on to the crew bag. Inside is naturally her operation body. If she exchanges the tablet, even the children's size will be too large for her. So I wonder how she'd use the life jacket. Oh. Um, thank you for waiting. After finishing her phone call, Fukumai comes back to us. She's slouching a bit, as if she's sorry. 
because she is rather tall, it makes her overall impression stiff. The elated feeling we had for a tourism activity suddenly feels stifled a bit. Let me take you to the ship. Um, please be careful of getting wet from the splashing water. Uh, Draco, this is the Kuma River. She turns around while saying that and twists her body. Patrick sits on my lap as if she's in her operation body and wavers side to side on the boat. It's big. Big and fast. I feel engulfed in it. The Verde? 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 Verdure of the forest on both sides of the river, as well as the blue-green color of the river water, the water fowl's songs and the flapping of their wings, the breeze that carries the scent of the water. You're right, it feels like we're being engulfed in it, but at the same time I feel released by it. Release? She opens her arms and stretches widely. You're right, Satsuma. Despite those two feelings being the opposite of one another, I feel both at the same time, too. After that, Hachiroku politely sits still on my lap, as if she has always belonged there. Knock. A sight shock. Wondering what it was, I take a look and see Fukumai at the front of the ship, hitting the rocks with a pole. She's standing up straight for a change. The boat is clearly unstab an unstable platform to stand on, and yet Fukumai uses her tall stature to skillfully manipulate the oar. The river itself is like the train tracks to Fukumai Sama. Yes. I nod to Atroku's statement. This is what it means for her to be in her elements. Uh, Nagi chan. Leave it to me! Watch out for the water splashes! Hm, whoa! Uh, so Totsu sama. The water is cool and refreshing. Yes, I suppose. We get into the fast current, and the river's personality suddenly changes. The boat jumps around while water falls on my head like an evening shower. There we go! Ooh, there we go! Fukumai thrusts the rock slightly with the pole to fix the direction of the boat. Right behind us is Nagi, at the stern with the paddle, moving it left and right to follow Fukumai's lead. They're good. Yes, despite the boat tilting side to side, I feel strangely safe. You're right. Just looking at Fukumai and Nagi's confident movements gives me reassurance. Soon, water splashes and the shaking of the boat subsides as the, we filter back into a gentle current. Have you two been doing this for a while? Look, my chan has been has been since she was little. It's only my second year. Second year. How are you so calm about it, having only been doing it for two years? The Tamahari has less to learn than the ferryman. If I had tried out my skills as a as Sindo, I couldn't do it. I have no idea what that sentence meant in the slightest. Oh. The one who stands on the bow to control the ship is the Sindo, and the one who uses the paddle to follow the Sindo is called the to Mahari. Okay, okay, thank you for the clarification. After making her explanation, Nagi shrugs. Because there are no customers for the Kuma River downstream boating, Fukumai chan had to deal with all the Sendo people quitting. So that's why you're working as the Tomahari, Nagi san? So that's why you're working as the Tomahari, Nagi san? In short, yep, this is part of my Kinjutsu training. <laughs> Uh, Nagi-chan. Whoops, time to switch as the Sendo. There aren't any more rapids after this point. Uh, I see. Be careful, though. I should be the one saying that to you. Better make sure you tied up your life jacket right. Come on, now. 
I get to the front of the boat after the inappropriate joke. Hook my hands to Poltanagi, says a few words of advice, and then carefully moves to the back of the boat. That was a wonderful display of skill. Uh, like I mentioned that you've been doing this since you were a kid? Yes. Ever since I was a baby, the boat's been like a cradle to me. Oh. She positions herself at the stern to hold the paddle, but her back is still straight. She stands tall and watches over Nagi at the bow. I'm fine if I'm working on the boat. I just don't know how to run a business or advertise. Things like that. midori son was, was her name, correct? Did she do everything prior to her getting sick? Yes. When my mother and father ran things, business was good. All the way until my father fell ill from overworking himself. I actually rode on one of these back then. Really? Fukumai cracks a smile. Her gaze turns to the horizon down the river, far, far away. It wasn't long after I was adopted into the Makita family. Together with Tato san, my adoptive father, adoptive mother, McCurney, and Hibiki. How was it? Well, you know, I wasn't used to it. I was pretty nervous and basically just stared outside the boat the whole time. And I remember it was around this season, though. It was a bustling sight. There were numerous boats lined up, and all of them were filled to the brim with customers. That was the thing that made me warm up to the whole process. And by the time I exited the boat, I was able to speak more naturally. From what I can remember, I don't think the scenery has changed a bit. The changing of the current, the tilting back and forth, it's just as it was. The river shows a different expression each day. But it's still the same face. Expressions and faces. The surface of the water is written as the face of the water. I've never thought about the river having a face or expressions, but now I'm interested about the ones who do see it every day. What about the Kuma River? Is it a man or a woman? <laughs> what kind of face does it make? A woman. No. A girl. An adolescent. Oh. She's like an older sister. She shows a lot of emotion and is cute. But sometimes, when she's mad, she becomes very, very rough. So she is quite emotional then? Yes, something like that. After saying that, Fukumai looks around the river lovingly. It's bottomless, fierce, and you can't figure it out, even if you wanted to. She's a troublesome girl, but she's all the more charming because of it. Fukumai's eyes turn to me. There's nothing hidden atop the river. Fukumai, standing tall, looks straight at me. Things easy to understand. They're shallow, thin. They don't last. They eventually fade from our minds. I see. My evaluation of her changes. At first I didn't care one bit about her, but the meaning behind her name rings true. Fukumai, meaning depth, fits her perfectly. If I can bring her uh, bring it If I can bring out her potential, she can become a huge supporting force for Ohatoyo. And that's your reason for opposing the Equifactory? Yes. Shout out a sigh of relief. Because I love the Kuma River. However, consider this. She's bright and strong deep down. There's no need to treat her like a child. Even if you can protect the environment, if you can't do the same for the livelihood of people, they and their homes get destroyed. Uh, if humanity were to die off, Everything was to return to nature. At face value, that sounds poetic. Fukumai's gaze starts to wander away from me. Her back starts to round and slouch. Even if the tourism promotion through the SL is a success with the current state of things, the downstream boating for tourists won't recover. Um, so I 
try, I'll try my best. Bonk. Whoa. A yard impact followed by the boat veering. Oh, it's fine. Nagi-chan just isn't very good at this. Yes. Fukumai tells me that before my worries run away with me. Even during the, our conversation, she had been looking at Nagi. She is better than expected. A diamond in the rough. It's precisely because you try so hard that it goes nowhere. That's what I think. Huh? You simply need to do on land what you do on water. That way, you, your problems with customer service or advertising will vanish. What? Fukuma looks surprised, rather fearful. She begins to round her back again. You didn't realize that. Look at yourself. Well, that's what you look like on land. Um, no. It's your back. You're rounding up, as if trying to protect yourself. Your beautiful stance has completely gone to waste that way. Your beautiful stance? Fukumai turns to the front of the boat. You mean Nagi-chan? How on earth did you get that out of what I just said? I'm talking about you, Fukumai. When you're on the boat, you're proud and beautiful. Huh, no, that that's not true. Uh oh. Perhaps out of difference? Perhaps out of difference, she begins to row the paddle while swinging her arms wildly. Why would you say that? I think it's a fact. B because because at school. She shrinks away even more, her face now pointed down, and she's looking at me with upturned eyes. My classmates say that I'm big, so I'm not cute. All the boys call me a giant. All the girls are simply envious of you, and the boys tease the girls they like. B but I really... If I'm this big, I can't be cute. What about that? Look at my, you are not cute. That's that's because you're big. Ah, uh, so that's Usama. Fuku already made up her mind about it. There's no way to convince her otherwise. But cute and beautiful are entirely different things. Huh? Your size makes you unable to be cute. But it's also your size, particularly when you stand up proud, that makes you so beautiful. Not to mention. You look gallant and dependable. I track his voice. She says what is on her mind in a straightforward way. Your dignified look gave me reassurance, despite not being used to riding in a boat. Wobble. Oh, oh, oh! Just like she has said herself, Nagi is terrible at the Sindo. Utterly terrible. But the reason why I don't feel any fear is because Fukumai's eyes are constantly watching over her. Think about it purely in terms of business. Think about customer service and advertising. Sure. A sendo's... A sendo that's just cute. And a sendo that's beautiful, gallant, and dependable. If you're a customer, which boat would you want to go on? The latter. Because the river is a dangerous place. That's right. The workplace is not like school. There's no meaning or reason to try to apply your school evaluation here. Fukumai nods. She must always have wanted to do this, as it can be seen from her straightening her posture. It's natural for you to be big. <laughs> if you distort, that problems will occur. Isn't that the same as the river? Yes. Then get used to it, little by little. Learn to give yourself some space. By doing so, Stand up straight naturally, and the problems will solve themselves. I think I understand. Uh, I'll try to fix it. I'll be thankful if you can do it. Me too. I can't bear to see something so beautiful be twisted out of proportion. Uh, thank you, Sotetsu Oni-san, Hachoku-san. Fukumai stands up straight again. It looks to Nagi as a signal. Nagi nods, looking relieved. 
We're almost at the dock. Once we dock, uh, what are you two going to do? We were thinking of returning to Hotoyo Station for now. In that case, let's ride in Grandpa's truck together. Grandpa's truck? Is the truck an aircraft truck? No, it's a gasoline one. It's the one with exhaust gas coming out of it. Oh my, a gasoline vehicle? Hatroku has inquiring eyes. She listens intensely while nodding. Well, that's rare in this day and age. Is there any reason for that? Because the dock uh, is in Hinoi. It's far from farther upstream where the rapids are. I see, between Hinoi and Ohotoyo at night. It's near the Jutsun... Jutsun... Jutsun abandoned mines. The place was... You pass through a place where you can't use Acra. Yes, uh, hence the truck. Because it's understaffed, no one is using the Unoi dock now. Then let us work together. With the restoration of Ohotoyo's tourism, we will also revive the Unoi dock. Yeah, I'll try. After saying that, Fukumai begins staring at my face. Um, it can be anything. If there's anything I can do to help, I'll do it. In that case, we need people. Can you introduce me to some? People? What kind? Folks familiar with either tourism or railways. Or, if possible, both. They must also be clearly against the aircraft factory. Then I have just the person. There's this... What was it again? Imperial Rail? And the person I'm thinking of used to work there. Fukumai-chan! That's Nagi's voice. Fukumai turns away from me and quickly states that we'll resume later. Hurry up and switch with me! I can't talk the boat on my own! Okay. She starts running off before she finishes her sentence. Fukumai is walking to the bow of the boat. In the middle of the way, she turns around. She shows a genuine, albeit reserved, smile. Nagi-chan, you need to calm down. You still have 40 seconds to spare. The moment I step into the area, I hear sounds of animals. Geese and chickens, specifically. This place hasn't changed at all, either. Oh. It's a beautiful shrine. Whispering quietly to herself, Hachiroku takes a deep breath. Otoyo is a town that has the scent of water, but the air here is particularly clear. You're right. It seems really clean. This place also hasn't changed at all. We visit the shrine. I was brought here with Hibiki and McCurney by Tato-san once before. Ah, oh, speaking of which, back then Tato-san. Uh, take a look, Hachiroku. Ah! I place my hands on Hachiroku's sides and pick her up high so she can see better. The base connecting the entrance of the gate with the roof, right at the corner over there. Though when she finds it, Hachiroku's eyes go wide. Unless we anticipated, of course. No one would expect this to be at the gate of a shrine. Oh my! What is that? Oh, it's the face of a god? No, it's the face of an oni. It's supposed to be called the uh, Kimen Zukuri. An oni mask at a shrine? Why would they do that? No one seems to know. I hear that this is super uncommon in the first place. Is there an Oni sealed inside the gates? Perhaps. There is a, the ghost temple close by. Hatrico's voice and gaze sink. Oni and ghosts? Oetoyo is actually a scary place. Hatrico's voice and expression catch me off guard. Why would rail lords be afraid of ghosts or Oni? Shoot, that was dumb to say. I should have thought about it before opening my mouth. Hatroku has caused an accident. In that sense, I already know that. So, Tetsu-sama, 
Perhaps she knows what I'm thinking, but Hachiroko tilts her head while looking at me. I'm glad I'm not a real lord. Had there been sympathetic communication, we would have irreparably hurt each other. I... But I am human. I can only communicate things I say. There are also things I'm bad at communicating. That's why I'll say it. I won't hide anything and reveal the real me. I do not feel ghosts or oni. Reality always rids the world of those things. Then, so Tetsu-sama. Hatraku accepts my words and returns with a question. Are you most afraid of reality, then? I'm... not sure. I can't answer. I don't even know it myself. What reality do I fear? What do I... This is out of the question. That's crazy. Anyone could figure that out. Please wait. Kisaki senpai Oh my. Hatraku looks at my face. It's Ibiki's voice. The voices, accompanied by footsteps, are coming toward us from the main shrine. It's not about profit or loss. That's absolute nonsense. If there aren't profits, something as simple as this shrine couldn't be maintained. A student in uniform approaches us, stomping all the way. She notices us before putting on an awkward expression. I let her pass by, bowing slightly as she does. Jeez, I said, wait, Nini? Nini? That's not what I meant. What a coincidence, Nisan. Fancy seeing you here. You're right about that. I never would have expected to see you here either. Hibiki is using her outside voice. Just want to keep her appearances while in front of the students. You are Hibiki san's brother? <laughs> then allow me to introduce myself. She bows elegantly. She has completely erased the hostility she showed when she was marching toward us. Nice to meet you. My name is Hosho Kisaki. Yeah, Kis Kisaki, okay. At school, Hibiki san and I are in the same club. Uh, thank you for the proper introduction. I'm Megidu Sotetsu. Uh, by fate, I have become Hibiki's brother. Fate? <laughs> That's an interesting way of putting it. Is it? Then her as well. She is also accompanying you by fate. This girl, Kasaki, looks at Hachiroku next to me and smiles suggestively. She's beautiful. I think this is the first time I've seen such fine, long black hair. I thank you for the compliments, Kisaki-sama. Hachiroko makes an elegant bow, to which Kisaki also returns the favor. Smooth and refined. Those words describe the bow perfectly. And you're also well taught in etiquette. Pleased to meet you, miss. What is your name? By fate, I am under the care of Sotetu-sama. I'm rare lord. I'm a rare lord. My name is Hachiroku. Rail lord! Oh, like Reina of the Inoue line. Reina san and I are like sisters because we are both rare lords. Is that so? She shows a bit of surprise, but it quickly subsides as she looks over Hachiroku once more. You look much more classical than Reina, and as a whole, you appear to be much more well designed. I was specifically made that way. Actually, as I am the 8620 series, top number exclusive rail, rail lord. Oh! Kasaki nods, like she understands before turning back to Hibiki who's behind her. That's not very nice of you, Hibiki. You didn't tell me that brother has returned. Um, there were special circumstances about that. That brother? That's a strange way of putting things. She makes it sound like she's met me before. Could it be that you've heard about me from Hibiki? <laughs> well, of course. During all of our club meets, she would mention you in some way, shape, or form. Kikisa, senpai. 
that you're enrolled in the Imperial University and that you help with the family business. Oh, that's right. Kasaki suddenly slides, slides her hand inside her inner pockets. In a smooth movement, she takes out a card holder and hands me a business card. Pleased to be your acquaintance. My name is Hosho Kisaki, and I work at a bank. A bank. There is only one bank in uh, Hotoyo. Just to be sure, I accept the business card and read the print. As expected, it says... Kumamoto, Bank Ohetoyo Branch Manager. Oh, a manager, nice. Branch Manager? So, are you the one who is leading the way for the aircraft factory? Is this regarding the building of the factory? Um, are you... I ever turned to Otoyo in order to have the solicitation of the factory withdrawn. <laughs> We're here already, uh, can we talk about this a little? Ah, so that's why. Kasaki glances at Hibiki. So that's why Hibiki didn't tell Kasaki about my return. I'm sorry, sir. I'd love to chat with you some more. Kasaki's glance brushes over the watch on her wrist, which is exposed by her summer uniform. I used up my time on a fruitless debate earlier. My schedule is quite packed after this. I see. I apologize for asking without taking into consideration your schedule. I should be the one apologizing for turning down your offer, but I agree that we may as well talk. With the same hand she that puts away the card holder, she takes out a handbook. If it's over summer vacation, I'll have some free time in the mornings. Maybe we could make an appointment for another day. Yes, let's uh, set up a meeting then. Sure, though our positions are opposite to each other's. She holds out her right hand and we exchange a brief handshake. I will see you then. Yes, see you then. Ooh, uh, Kisaki senpai! Kisaki quickly walks off, with Hibiki frantically in pursuit. While following Kisaki, Hibiki turns around and wants to stick her tongue out at me. Why? I didn't think I made Hibiki mad in any particular way. So, is she the head of, an, of the Aircraft Factory supporters? She patiently waited for Kisaki and Hibiki to walk out of sight before quietly asking me. It'd be scary if she wasn't the head. That'd mean there's someone else above her. Hetra gives an ambiguous smile before falling silent. She already knows. I can't believe how, uh, bush league I was there. If we would have gotten into a debate, it would have put Hibiki in an awkward position. She must have understood that too, which is probably why she suggested delaying it, skillfully letting Hibiki and me save face. If you're inexperienced, then simply become mature. Hmm? That's what you taught me, Sotetsu-sama? Uh, yes, th that's right. This past day I've met a variety of people, possibly putting me into a bit of disarray. I can only be myself, no matter how far I go. I'll do things the way I believe th to be right. If it doesn't work, then I'll correct course. Alright, let's go, Hachiroku. We're starting fresh. Yes. I'll be glad to join you, Sotetsu Sama. We step onto the cobblestones and move forward. To meet the former Imperial Railway worker that Fukumai told us about. The chief priest of the Akai Shrine. Hmm. Interesting. Hope that goes well. <laughs>